All right, guys, Good Boy 32 here. Check it out. So I'm sitting here on the review table, and what you're seeing in front of you are a bunch of bulk carrier groups. Probably one of the most uh, intensely studied uh, object, maybe other than a barrel and a handguard and maybe a stock and a buffer tube and a buffer spring and a buffer system and the trigger system and all the other neat jazz that belongs on an AR-15. But one of the uh, things that we talk a lot about are bolt carrier groups. And a while back I said, you know, what I may want to do is sit down and discuss all these bolt carriers. This, bolt carrier groups. Let's do this. I want to make this fun, but I want to do it in a more of an educated manner to present you with some information. Now what we're going to do is towards the end of this deal, we're going to divide these up and well, we got four groups here. One, two, three, four. The reason we have these divided up into four different groups, well, you've got lightweight competition bolts, you've got enhanced bolts, you've got semi-auto bolts, that little guy right there, and here are uh, full auto bolts. Does that mean that you're going to stick them in your AR-15 and your AR-15 is going to run full auto? Well, no, 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 no. But what that does mean is that you're getting something that is mil spec. What does mil-spec mean? It is the minimum standards that are required by uh, the technical manuals, and, and I could give you the numbers on there. I actually read a few of them here in a few minutes. But what we want to do is start off by going over all the cool little ins and outs about what bolt carrier groups have, why they are shaped the way they are, what materials they're made out of, and that kind of thing. And then, because <laughs> I thought it was really cool, one of the guys made a comment that we need to make a ladder bracket to find out of which of my bolt carrier groups are the best. Now, there are some missing. Did Daniel Defense, well, that was on loan by the various guys over there at arms list. That's gone back over to them. Uh, but we have gone ahead and invested in one of these guys right here, the BCM bolt carrier group. And this is their flat dark earth. So, what I'm planning on doing is we're going to talk about this real quickly. This might be a lengthy video, but I hope to be, it will be entertaining and, and informative. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about bolt carrier groups. We're going to talk about the types of profiles. We're going to talk about the coatings. We're going to talk about the materials made. Uh, let's see. I'm going to pull my manual out here. And we're going to talk about the testing and why that's important. We've got roughly uh, the different types, right? We've got semi-auto. Now, the semi-auto basically is a mil-spec bolt carrier with this little tail piece right here that's cut out. As you can see from this guy right here, this is the new bolt from the guys over there uh, at Tribe Defense. This is a full auto bolt, and it has a full weighted piece. Now, this is not for weight loss. This is so it will engage the auto sear and return the hammer back to normal. Chris over there, at Small Arm Solutions does a great job of explaining this to you guys. And if you need more detail on that, then that's what you need to do. Go over there and listen to him. That guy knows what he's talking about. So we've got the semi-auto. We have the full auto, which is that right there. Then we have basically an enhanced version. Now what's enhanced mean? Well, they took a, a mil-spec bolt carrier group, like this guy right here, and they gave it some additional features. Most likely, it's not going to be reduction in weight, but it's going to be made better. Uh, one, by coatings or by uh, milling or configurations or different things. Now, this is a Lantac. This guy's probably going to end up being one of your better uh, bolt carrier groups out there because it, uh, it has one of the, the highest testing measures is MPI, HPT, and shot peen also. But it has a bunch of different things. We've got uh, the anti-tilt bolt tilt or carrier tilt roundness right here, as well as a round cam pin right there, as you can see. Now, there are four of these guys right here. Now, a lot of people ask me, is SRC, Shots Rifle Company, going to be in there? Heck yeah, they are. You know why? Because they're one of the best ones out there. This guy is awesome. So it's going to come down to where... You're going to see, I don't know, this Radian right here versus maybe, this is one of my favorites also, the CMC. They Don't they look very similar? Well, you can see the carrier tilt enlargement pieces right here. Very cool. Uh, which one's the best? 
that's going to be interesting. We're, we're going to do a bracket test down there. It's kind of like the NBA kind of thing. No, not NBA. NCAA. All right. So we've got our full auto guys right here. And then we've got our, uh, what do you call these things? The semi-autos. Here's a really cool one for Fell Zero. This is a black nickel boron covering. Very, very nice. And I like the way they have that done right there on there. But what we're going to do is I'm going to do a review on all of these that I have not already done. Okay, so what are we talking about these guys right here? These are bolts, carriers that have been cut down to reduce weight. What's the lightest one in here? It's going to be this guy from DS Arms. You know why? Because it's made of aluminum. The carrier is made of aluminum. This whole thing only weighs like 5.3 ounces. There's pros and cons. It doesn't weigh that much. What's the con? You're not going to get the longevity out of it that you would say something that was made from Rubber City Armory with a titanium nitride finish. This is probably one of the best, in my opinion, one of the best bolt carriers on this table. Well, there's a couple of them. So say, for instance, another other one, this guy right here, the JP. This thing is bad to the bone. All right, so coatings is one of those other things. Oh, I forgot to mention adjustable, but guys, I don't run a suppressor, uh, so I have not messed with any of the adjustable bolt carrier groups on here. So you're not going to see any of those on the table, but I do want to make sure that we get those. So we've got, uh, we've got semi-auto, full auto, enhanced, lightweight, and adjustable. But also, one of the real cool things is, say we're talking about body styles and things of that nature, I want you to look at that bolt right there. Now guys, if you're not familiar with those folks over there at Sharps Rifle, this is called the Relia Bolt. And you can see that the bolt carrier, the lugs, are not squared off on that bolt. Let me make sure we get enough light. So that's one of the things I wanted to show to you, which means, and I, I, I have never had a malfunction out of this guy. And with the type of materials that it's made out of, you're not going to have any issues as well up a little bit. Let's talk about coatings really quickly. Um, guys, there's a plethora of coatings out there. There's just, there's so many different coatings that, you know, you can lose count. Uh, the first starting out, and if I could tell which one's which, let's see here. Yeah, here we go. This, believe it or not, this is a great bolt right here. This is Palmetto State Armies. This is their premium phosphate covered bolt. This guy's MPI and HPT tested. These things are absolutely incredible for the money. And we'll be talking about that as part of the relationship between all these guys. How do you take a bolt and weigh it? Not talking about how much it weighs, but what is the value? Uh, phosphate's probably going to be the, the, well, it is the original magnesium phosphate. Uh, also, it is mil spec. If you guys have been in the military, you're probably, the bolt you had is going to be phosphate covered. These things are like chalky when they are brand new. Now, you can see some of the wear on this guy right here and on the rails. Now, when uh, just to, real quickly, this is the part that makes contact with your upper receivers here, here, and here. All right, let's put that back. Let's talk about nitride finish. Where's a nitride finish one? Uh, you can tell a nitride finish BCG because it's going to be really, really slick. And I believe this Faxon is a nitride flavor, a nitride finish. It's black, but it's slicker finish. It's a be better looking finish. Was it last longer? I don't know. Uh, again, let's talk about beware the man with one rifle. Guys, all these bolt carrier groups, I would have to say there's a couple in here that have seen over a thousand rounds. Uh, there's a couple have seen uh, several thousand rounds. This guy right here, the Rubber City Arsenal Armory. This one is in my competition gun, and it gets nonstop treatment as well as this JP. But what that basically tells you is that I get a rifle. I shoot it probably five or six hundred rounds, a thousand rounds maybe, and then it goes in the gun safe. So those, there's guys out there who have thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds. I'm going to give a quick shout out to the regular training guy. He was the inspiration for this video. He has a tool craft that uh, exploded two bolts. Now, I'm not sure what kind of ammo he does or shoots through there, but I know the guy, he shoots a lot. If you follow him, 
uh, but he shoots a lot with one single rifle is where me, I've got a bunch of rifles and I sh don't shoot that many rounds through those individual rifles. All right, let's talk about, well, we talked about uh, nitride. We talked about phosphate. There's another company that's not here, Cryptic Coatings. I'm not sure if their coatings are different. They got some cool looking stuff out there as well as Big Daddy Unlimited has their stuff from White Label that is coated in all kinds of cool things. Uh, nickel Boron. All right, so this guy right here, this is a tool craft. And this is one of the reasons why we're talking about this. This is the uh, Palmetto State Armory 15, a PA-15 made by Toolcraft. It is a nickel boron. The advantage with nickel boron is it's a very slick finish. Supposedly, you don't have to run lubricant. I never run a gun dry. Uh, so that's it. This is nickel boron. Another company I want you to take a look at, though, is WMD. Now, this is nickel boron. Nibex. Nib X. There's a difference between these two. Let's put these down. This is a new WMD. This is an old WMD. This is this is the very first bolt carrier group that I ever bought. Now, if you guys think that your nickel boron or nib X is going to say all beautiful and bright, and there's gonna be some play, well, take some flits to it and polish it. And I said, I don't have that much time in my day. But you can see there's some areas right here where either I'm down to pure metal or I just got a real clean area. But this has been one fine bolt. Now, you can take a bolt and hold it up on end like this, and you can see how, well, I don't know, watch. See how well that does? Those rings are probably due for a good replacing. Now, I've probably got 20,000 rounds through this guy. This one, those rings are sitting tight. They're just like rings in a, uh, a car, a cylinder. They will break in. And also, that's one of the reasons why when I, uh, and they're all tagged. You can guys, you see, there's a reason they're tagged. Because when I take a bolt out of a rifle, it goes back into that same rifle. Simply because after a couple thousand rounds, that bolt has made it up to the lugs in the barrel and they have broken in together. Uh, whenever you do break a bolt and you've got six or 7,000 rounds through it, you all definitely need to check your head spacing. Go no-go gauges. Okay, we're still on finishes. Oh, chrome. I don't have any chrome ones sitting here, but what I do have is a DLC. This is the Palmetto State Army. This is their DLC cover. You can see that that guy's seen some action. Uh, who else has got diamond light? Oh, the Sharps rifle is also diamond light coating. This guy is made of a S7 steel, carbon steel, and this is just, I think, regular 8620 steel. So we'll talk about uh, different steel manufacturer, steel products here in a minute. So we talked about diamond light coatings, uh, titanium nitride. Yes, one of my favorites. I like the gold. So titanium nitride. See that one? This is a lightweight bolt. This is the brown nails version. This is also titanium nitrite. Let's see if you're gonna fall. Nope. These are both basically the same materials. I purchased this one. It's actually on my website. For, uh, shoot, man, these were like $118, $119. This guy right here is about $350. <laughs> there's a big difference, but there's a huge difference in the steel and the testing and everything else that's involved in them. So we've talked about diamond light coating, cryptic coating, nitride, phosphate, nickel boron, nibex, chrome, and titanium, T-I-N. This is a nitride finish or DLC. Hell, I don't know. This is one of my favorite bolts. This is uh, the JP. Okay, so we've got a plethora of bolt carrier groups out here. Let's continue moving forward. Materials. Uh, like I said before, the Sharps rifle. And, if, and Guys, the more and more I keep mentioning specific uh, bolt carrier groups, there's a reason for that. This is a, an exceptional bolt carrier group. Uh, this is made of S7 tool steel. You want to talk about bad to the bone? It's oil cooled. The, 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 the uh, what do you call that? The molecular makeup of this thing is just incredible. Now there's a couple of other bolts out there. Uh, you've got 9310 steel, and I'm talking specifically about the carrier, and then 8620 steel. There's the, like this guy right here. 
this bolt from the great folks over there at, uh, let me call them, hold on, the great guys over there at BCM, this thing, if I believe, I haven't even taken, I have not even taken this apart. It's dirty because I'm, I've been holding it and playing with it and fondling it and that kind of thing. Got some oil on there, that's good. But this thing is 158 Carpenter Steel. It has been, let me get the camera in there, hopefully that'll focus in there, HP and MPI tested. That's going to be, and literally and truly, we could talk about those specific items for two or three videos on the reasons why, what, when, where, and how. But uh, this is probably one of your best mil spec bolts. Moving forward, let's talk about another thing. The gas key, you want to take a look at the fasteners. They're supposed to be grade eight fasteners. And also, we'll, we'll talk about specific items such as gas keying the uh, staked and being staked properly. You guys, here's the thing. There's the epitome of being staked properly, like you can see on the BCM right here. No, that's not a BCM. That's um, <laughs> Actually, that's the Palmetto State Armory. This is the Fell Zero. And then you've got this guy right here, the BCM. Staking does not look that unsimilar. The biggest thing for staking is that you can see where the material is making contact with that screw that holds your gas key in. In most cases, if it's making contact, you're not gonna have any problems out of that thing. A couple variants on the table right here. One of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna see, and, 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 it, and it does play a part in a role in uh, a bolt carrier group that I am going to use in either competition or service rifle or anything else. I am going to want it to be at least high pressure tested or magnetically particle tested or shot peened. Uh, there's a couple on here that have all three. The Lantac, right here. This guy, and it actually, well, where was it? Yeah, it's stated on there somewhere in the specifications. That's going to be your highest, highest grade of testing. Real quickly, let's just go over what HPT, MPI, and shot peen means. Okay, HPT means that they took either this bolt or a bolt from, or several from the batch where this was made, and they test fired it with a high pressure round. They then take the casing, they inspect the casing, and then they test and they look at the bolt to see if there's any damage to the bolt. Okay, that's high pressure testing. MPI, pretty cool little process. What they do is you got an electrode here, electrode here, and they charge that thing and it creates a magnetic field. And then they submerge it or they put magnetically particles all over it. And then when you hit that thing with an ultraviolet light, I'll show a picture of it real quick. Look, what happens is, is you can see the deformities or the imperfections or cracks in the bolt. And those are pretty evident under an ultraviolet light. So that's what that's talking about. Now, shot peened, you know, it's interesting Now, you guys correct. You guys are probably a little bit more intelligent than I am, but shot peened to me is basically what they do is they take a bunch of shot and they, bam, they bombard this thing and it creates a small dimple. And what those dimples do is they, <clears throat> they create this, this uh, texture and it crosses over all the little magnetic particle stuff and it creates a, a better formed metal or steel. That's it. Um, so what we're gonna do moving forward hopefully, if you guys are wanting to continue this whole process, is we're going to do a bracket test. I'm going to take and develop a bracket for all my mil spec guys here. I'm not going to cross over. We're not going to have two WMDs in here. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and compare and do a bracket for all these guys here. I know then it just makes you sick to hear all that. Then we're going to take these two guys right here. This is actually a Delton. That's rifle number two for me many moons ago. This is the uh, Hoss rifle, Ranger rifle. And uh, this is a great rifle, a 14.7 inch uh, barrel on it. And it's, and it's done up real good. But we'll do a comparison and you know what? Who knows who will win over top of these. 
And then we'll take these guys right here and do a, a, uh, a bracket for these, and then we'll do a bracket for these. And I'll let you guys vote on who is going to win the bracket based on the head-to-head -head evaluation of each one of the pieces. I think it's going to be a cool series. I just, uh, I, I just wanted to do something fun where you guys could see one of the most, like this guy right here, the Lantac. This is going in an upcoming build. The reason this guy is what it is, it's one of the best bulk carrier groups on the market, period. Not just because it's expensive, but because it brings to the table a lot of features. In any case, it should be a lot of fun. I want to thank uh, the guys over there at Optics Planet for sending a bunch of these out there. Uh, this Tribe Defense, this is going to be a good tester to move forward with. Uh, this is one of their deals that's been uh, MPI tested. Uh, we've got Faxon here. That's a good one. Oh, also, a different type of bolt that you guys may have not ever seen before. I hope you have. This is the Cali Key bolt, and this is the Cali Key Bolt Action AR. So this brings something else to the table. So you guys living out there in states where you want to hunt with an AR platform, this is for a 6.5 Creedmoor right here. All you got to do is, well, this comes out just like that, but... To turn it into a single action versus a semi-automatic, and it goes back and forth, and it diverts gas out the side. I like this thing. I have tested this specific one for Cali Key, and we have found uh, there is a slight increase in accuracy, and I'm just going to leave it at that. There are also high-pressure 6.5 Creedmoor, like this guy right here. This is a big old fat one from JP. This is a bad mamma jamma, and it could probably use a little cleaning. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, that's it. Uh, we'll be putting these out. I don't want to inundate uh, the whole uh, next couple weeks with this. But over time, we'll take a minute to do a couple competitions. Uh, we'll put the bracket together. It'll be uh, part of the thumbnail. And we'll just have some fun. And I hope that this was somewhat informative for you starting out as we do a comparison uh, between these two, you're going to learn more as I learn more and I'm able to give you guys more information. But with that being said, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so. We always end them like this. Support the red, white, and blue. You, me, and the boys in blue and those guys who support and defend our Constitution as it was written by our founding fathers. And uh, that's it, 24-7 for freedom because freedom is not free. And uh, subscribe like and all that other neat jazz. We're going to have fun with this series. And I hope, and if you've got any other questions or you want me to add something or you want me to become, what we're, we'll do is, we will, I'm going to quit talking now, but we're going to go ahead and create a set of criteria uh, so that it's systematic. So at the end of the day, somebody's going to come out king on this thing. And I just want it to be based on the criteria, not on personal preference. Codeboy32, I'm out of here. Y'all be good.